hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a little bit more of a casual vlog. I don't have an actual theme for this vlog. Uh, it's just that I kind of wanted to read Malibu Rising, not just because it's on my TBR list, but also just in general, I've been wanting to read it ever since I bought it. And I don't really have a theme for this book, as in it doesn't fit in any of the other videos that I have planned recently. And I don't think I really want to try and match it to other books so that I can make a themed video that is going to be a little bit forced in the end. So I'm just going to read this this weekend and I have a lot on as well in terms of my social life at the moment. So I'm probably going to take you along for some of these things and read this book. That's about it. So Malibu Rising is a book by Taylor Jenkins Reid and it's I wouldn't say it's contemporary because it's actually historical fiction, I guess, technically, uh, but it does happen in the 80s. So the reason that I was really excited for this book is because I have read now two books by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which are the two most known ones that she's written, uh, which is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and the other one is Daisy Jones and the Six. I'm not going to go into detail about what these books talk about, but feel free to go check them out. They're great. I rated both five stars, so... I have, needless to say, very high expectations for this book. I'm hoping I'm also going to want to rate it five stars by the time I'm done with it. So this one is actually about, I think, a really famous family in Malibu. And I think we focus on a bunch of different characters from this family. And the fact that it all culminates to one big party night in the house in Malibu, where the house catches fire or something. That's really all I know because it doesn't tell you much in the synopsis of it. Let me read it to you. So Malibu, August 1983. It's the day of Nina Riva's annual end of summer party and anticipation is at a fever pitch. Everyone who's anyone wants an invite to catch a glimpse of the famous Riva siblings. Nina, the talented surfer and supermodel. Brothers Jay and Hud, one a championship surfer, the other a renowned photographer, and their adored baby sister, Kit. Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the children of the legendary singer Mick Riva. By midnight, the party will be completely out of control. By morning, the Riva mansion will have gone up in flames. But ahead of that first spark in the early hours before dawn, the alcohol will flow, the music will play, and the loves and secrets that shape this family will all come bubbling to the surface. That's it. So as you can tell, it doesn't actually tell you that much about it, except that we're going to focus on a family, the different people in this family. They're really famous. They live in Malibu in the 80s. And by the end of this big party thing, the house is going to be on fire. That's literally all we know. <laughs> thought that you were weak but babe you're wrong yeah you better step into the light just give it a try think that it's time you let that spark out you've been hiding in the shadows way too long So I'm sorry I'm not wearing any makeup on my face right now. I just couldn't be asked right now because it is literally 30 degrees in London uh, and I think real feel is like 33 or something. So it's just a bit mental right now because London does not handle the heat well, aka it's very heavy and very humid and there's not much air passing by and going through <laughs> so it's just hot and our buildings here are not built for this kind of heat because it's literally like four weeks a year something like that so no one's ever you know got any built-in air con unless you're in an office or something so it's pretty rare so it's been I think over a week since the last time I spoke to you guys and I've not read that much I'm being a little bit slow at the moment I've read about 100 pages I think yeah 114 pages of Malibu Rising and I am quite enjoying it but I don't know if I'm just not in the mood to read it specifically 
or just not to read anything. Um, I think basically my only issue with it at the moment is kind of exactly that, it's the fact that I haven't picked it up more often than I should have, uh, considering that it's a Taylor Jenkins read book and every other book that I've read by her, aka the only other two books that I've read by her, so Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I did pretty much finish in one go. Uh, I think Daisy Jones I read in two like settings and my second setting was when I finished it super super fast and I think Evelyn Hugo I finished in one go in one day literally I read that book in one day and I guess because of that she kind of set a precedent for me and I was having super super high expectations about my level rising and expected to do the exact same and it's just not happened which doesn't mean that it's a bad book, it just means that I've not wanted to do the same with this book. So far we are following the four, I believe, children of Mick Riva. So we're in the 80s, we're following mainly, I'd say, Nina Riva, who's just been broken up with from her husband, who is currently, I don't think, yeah, he was having an affair, I think, with her, but he's currently sleeping with this other woman and just lives with her. Um, and Nina Riva is living alone in their beautiful house by the sea in Malibu. And she has this huge party that she kind of, uh, th that kind of just happens every year in the sense that she says herself, there's no invitations, people just show up. And it started as this low-key thing and is now this very not low-key thing. We're the day of the party and we get hours so I think it starts at like in the morning sometime. Part one is set up here and it's uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And so you have Nina and then you have her two brothers, uh, Jay and Hudson, uh, who we call Hud, and her little sister, Kit. And then we have the past. So we go back in time in... I think it starts in 59 and continues in the 60s, but it's basically when Mick Riva and his wife June, the parents of the kids, uh, met for the first time and kind of their story and their love story and, you know, the way that it crumbled down, where it turns out that Mick Riva is a big old cheater who just cannot keep his dick in his pants and just that keeps on happening. So yeah, it's basically these two storylines that we're following. I am enjoying the characters, I do want to know more about them, but some of the characters more than others, and I think maybe that's why I wouldn't say that this is my favourite so far of the books I've read by this author, uh, but I might change my mind as well because I do think that she's very good at building up on things. And I think I'm just gonna catch up with you guys when I have finished it because I don't really want to give any spoilers, so I'm not gonna plunge too much into the details, and I'm just gonna continue reading it and then let you know my thoughts by the end. No fans in now. God, it is hot. Um, I have now finished Malibu Rising and thought I would tell you what I think about it. Okay, so here's what happened. When I reached the second part of the book, I just read the entire thing, the rest of it, in one go, and I kind of finished it all last night. So I have had a little bit of time to think about it and to be able to formulate my thoughts. But yeah, I read the rest of this book so much faster than I read the first half of it. Just thought that was worth mentioning. And there's a quote, page 191, that actually summarizes 
the entire story, without any spoilers by the way, just it really summarizes what the book is about, so I thought I would just read it out loud to you. Family histories repeat, Nina thought. For a moment she wondered if it was pointless to try to escape it. Maybe our parents' lives are imprinted within us. Maybe the only fate there is, is the temptation of reliving their mistakes. Maybe, try as we might, we will never be able to outrun the blood that runs through our veins. Or, or maybe we are free the moment we're born. Maybe everything we've ever done is by our own hands. Nina wasn't sure. This is it. Like, to me, that little passage just really tells you what the book is about. It's essentially about family history and whether it does repeat itself or not. So I gotta say, this second part of the book really surprised me in two ways. The first one is that I actually really, really enjoyed the character of Nina afterwards. I did like her from the beginning, but we plunge way more into the why and the how, and we really focus more on her, and she becomes much more the main character of the book afterwards. And I really, really liked her. There's several moments that made me tear up a bit didn't actually cry, but you know, got me emotional and I think that's a good sign. It is still well written, it is still written by one of my favourite authors, so definitely enjoyed that. However, the bit that I didn't enjoy as much is that it focused so much on filler characters that I got really confused. So in the first half, before we get to part two, we have, like I said, these flashback moments. We go back in time from the 80s, because this happens in the 80s, to the 60s, and we kind of advance in time in that other timeline that we're seeing. So there are passages present the day of the party, and then there's passages in the past that slowly go forward until we reach the moment of the party, pretty much, until both timelines converge. And that was the first half. And then the second half, we're at the party. There's no more to say about the past. We're already there. And so I kind of feel like this book could have been cut by 100 pages or so. Not that it's that, you know, thick or anything, but just because there is so many passages that felt to me like they were filler because we don't have those flashback moments anymore. We're just straight at the party. And instead of focusing solely on the main characters, Nina, but also her siblings, we have so many passages from all other, like a bunch of other characters that are at the party. We go, oh, this person, they had just lost their wives and they're now like this, and this is why they're doing this at the party. That person, they've been looking for true love from the beginning, and at this party, they're hoping to find it. They don't know yet that their soulmate is right across the room. It's all passages like that. And frankly, I just, it, I didn't vibe with it. I didn't find it interesting. I was really bored of it. I was like, I don't care about them. Can we like just, just skip this and go straight to the main event, please? And yeah, no, it just didn't go straight to the main event. And it kind of made me think as well that Nina had become the main character fully, even though before it felt like we had POV from the other siblings. And we do still have some POVs from the other siblings in, in the second half, but not, it doesn't go deep, it doesn't go into the details of it, and so you kind of lose track of their feelings and emotions and their character arcs, and it just feels very bland. It just didn't feel like the character arcs were that big of a deal. I was like, oh, okay, this person is now like that. Okay, this person is now like this. Because we don't have time spent on them. We have more time spent on Nina and a bunch of other characters that we don't care about. And then one more thing that I thought was different from the other two books I've read by her is that there's a bit more of an imbalance. I feel like in the other books you have all sorts of characters that do all sorts of shitty things and sometimes not so shitty, but in general people are very they're balanced, you know, and you have women and men doing shitty things. In this book, it felt to me like it's mostly men doing shitty things, and by the end of the book I was like, well, men ain't shit. Like, it really made me think that by the end of this book. Just thinking about all the different characters, their flows, their actions. The women all, you know, maybe you get more of their reasons why they do certain things, but it's really the men that act in a way that made me think, wow, there's been some disappointment here that I don't know anything about. And then finally, my last thought on this is that my very favorite character in this entire book is Tereen. And if you know, you know. <laughs> I just love her so much. If you've read this book, you'll probably agree with me. I just feel like she's the best character. 
and I'm just a little bit sad that we didn't get to spend more time with her and get more information about that character because I think that would have been really interesting to know more about her. So in conclusion, I did enjoy this book. I did enjoy reading it, just the journey of it. It was fun to be able to vlog about it and solely focus on one book as well. But I do have to say it's not as good to me as the other two books I've read by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I had rated five stars. I ended up rounding it up to four stars on Goodreads, but my true rating is more 3.5. I just don't think that it has all the other ingredients that made the other two books so good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment, always try to respond. Consider subscribing, ring that bell, that jazz, and I will see you guys in the next one.